What is this guys? Check the bend on this. Well, very good morning and welcome back to another episode of Bailiwick Fishing. Today, we're going out to do the crab pots and we're going to do some boat fishing. So, we're on the way down there now. First, first uh, chat, we're going to be going to Ed's house. So, uh, Ed did the Christmas Day dive, which you can do um, in, the, in the Guernsey's Harbour. It's only once a year you can do it. You have to be with an organised group. And yeah, he went diving. So, uh, we're going to go and grab some uh, of the scallop frills and the shells. And we're going to be using them today, so you can't get any fresher. We're going to be using them, and hopefully we're going to try and catch some bream. So yeah, it's pretty... Uh, the wind's dropped off, it's pretty cloudy and overcast. Uh, I won't know what it's going to be like until we get out there. Hopefully it's alright. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing the pots. I haven't done them in, what, three weeks? So, a bit of a... Um, be interesting to see what's in there. Now, as you saw in the last trawling video, I managed to get a load of dogfish and we had dogfish in the trawl so uh, we're going to have some half decent pot bait to put in the pots today which is obviously the dogfish. Hopefully they'll last a bit longer than the mackerel, they're a bit tougher skinned and stuff like that so all going well. The next time we haul them we'll hopefully have something quite decent. Anyway what I'll do is I'll bring you back as soon as we get down the harbour. See you in a bit. So here we are guys, this is a dogfish, big heap of that in a bucket, that's the scallop frills we're going to be taking down, as you can see, it's a lovely still morning. All merched out with the Bailiwick fishing hoodies and the Bailiwick fishing van, looking lovely as always, if any of you guys do want any of the um, any of these hoodies then drop make sure you follow the instagram page bailiwick fishing and uh drop me an inbox and uh, i can get you one sorted out i've also got some vinyl stickers coming so you know you better stick it on your van or tackle boxes or whatever else you want to stick it on anyway i'm going to get my rod out of the van we're going to get this lot carted down to the uh boat we'll get the boat started and let's get out there what a morning <laughs> Those of you that haven't watched before, this is an Evinrude 50 two stroke hydraulic steering, so nice and light. It's 20, 2020. Uh, this is a Tahatsu four horsepower, um, uh, six horsepower Tahatsu four stroke. So that's the engines we're using. Right, let's get the other gear on board. Channel 16, guys. Garmin's going on. She starts straight away. Beautiful. Guys. 
of the sun guys it's stunning for december that's amazing god knows what to expect uh, you see i've just hooked it hooked it off the uh off the side there and here we go just try and get you the best position hopefully there's no water main thing is guys not to get your feet tangled with this because next time you uh, pay them out you're gonna get chucked over tangled nothing in the first pot heck of a mess and the second pot up oh so we got some baby spider crabs there's a brown crab there as well bring you in for a better look here we go guys so baby spider crabs a female off she goes another female another female another female baby male baby female male there's another one in the back here he's going to come through baby male and when he lets go female brown edible crab lovely old crab we'll see you in a few years time right let's bait these up with some of the dogfish give them a quick quick wash over the side i'm going to put a whole dogfish in because i've got plenty of them so they're well baited up two dogfish actually you can see what i'm doing here guys pulling the bait band and there we go one this side one this side dogfish is very abrasive guys if you're not familiar it's called the lesser spotted dogfish and it's part of the shark family and you can hear their skin it's just like sandpaper and i'm told years ago that they actually used to use the skin as this as sandpaper so it just shows that nature's always quite a good thing as well right i better untangle these pots eh what's going on here that's because of the storms guys this has made a right mess of this yeah guys i usually set the boat revs to about this i want to make sure that the gaffs are well out the way and i think it was this one first as you can see guys i'll just feed it out and i'll get the next pot ready keeping the boat nice and straight and off it goes And all I'm doing is playing it down the side of a rock and hoping to entice any lobsters or crabs to come out. I've got hold of the buff, chuck it out, on to the next ones. Nothing in them as expected. Here's the second pot, and nothing in that one. Right, guys, well, that's the last of the pots done. Let's do some fishing. So, what I'll do is I'll give you a run through of what uh, rod we're using. Same one as I was using in the bass videos. One of my favorite rods, Penn Regiment 2. 
Uh, it's a spin, spinning rod if you like, 20 to 60 gram. I've got a pen pursuit, 4,000 spool reel. I find that's probably the most mediocre um, size spool of reel. And it's a great, well, anything for pen is great. Anything with pen the, the, is absolutely fantastic. Obviously you can see I like it, I use most reels. I've got two 6,000 series of these you'll see in the shore fishing videos. Um, but yeah, what I like to do with the bream fishing, this rod's nice and whippy, and I don't really want to have a rod where I'm just winching them in. I like to have a bit of a, a bit of a, a, a fight as well. That's part of angling. So we'll get to the mark and we'll get set up. Hopefully, we'll have some nice bream for tea. So we arrived at the first mark we're going to be fishing at. I'm just going to set the rod up. Now what I like to do is use um, some feathers for the bream. So where some people will go and use like a um, paternoster or something like that, or a um, running ledger, where you can only catch one, one fish on, uh, on those or one or two. Whereas if you fish with a feathers, a six hook, six hook feathers well then you got you know a lot more chances and it's great fun when you get quite a few of them on so yeah i'm using 20 pound mono today the wind is south southwest so it's actually the other side but this is south of the island so it's just coming behind us um so it's pushing us along towards back towards the uh the harbour way of the marina oh. These feathers are the first ones I picked out. I'll use these, which are the Mac 200s. Got our feathers on. Now what we're gonna do is use some of, water or something made. Use some of these fine scallop frills that we've been given. I'm just gonna bait them up. Now I'm not gonna be scared about using a lot because we've got 128 scallops there, Dad. And he's uh, one dive, so he certainly knows what he's doing. I usually hook it around a few times. Bream are quite finicky. They'll either be biting today or they won't be. They're very, very finicky fish. And what they tend to do is snap at the bait and rip it off. And you get a lot of smaller fish and we'll, they just strip the bait. So expecting that. And that's another beauty of using um, small little hooks like the mackerel hooks. I tend to do head, hook them up a little bit easier. If this, this mark doesn't produce, guys, I'll know pretty instantly we'll move somewhere else. Tide's coming up. When we got out the marina, we can only get out on half tide up. So it is coming up. I think high water's about 20 to 11. And what I'm going to do, guys, you're going to go on the mount and we'll see if we can get some fish. Engine's off. We're baited up. Let's get down there. First drop guys, here we go. Now it's quite a snaggy bottom, so I don't want to be keeping right on the bottom, be otherwise we'll be hooked up. We're in 58 foot of water. Hopefully this is as point of view as you can get. I'm not quite at the bottom yet. The tide's gonna be running as well, so. Oh, we got bites already, look at that. Oh, better set our drag. Fish on guys, first drop. It's only something small, probably a bream. Tiny bream, I reckon. Yeah, small bream, tiny bream. That's too small, so back he goes and he's gone. There we go, guys. That there is a fine bream bait. You can see the hook exposure. There's just a bit, bit poking out. They've got the lovely black juicy bit they like. And then the frills, there's even a bit of a row there as well. So yeah, 
that's what we're uh, that's what we're trying to achieve on the bait presentation. We got plenty of bait. I usually hook it free once and then just keep hooking it on, moving it around. I think it's the stomach, the black bit of the scallop, but I'm not overly, sh I'm not 100%, so don't, don't take me on that, but I think that is the stomach and the bream seems to go mad for that. There we go, well baited up. Okay, well baited up, well baited up. Let's get down there. A few more bits of boat activity out in the background. Motor vessel going out. Oh, fish on guys, straight away. Tell it's a bream because of the head knocking. It must have taken it on the way down. You can see the rod. Nice little fish. There we are, guys. Absolutely splendid condition. Look at that. Look at the blues around its top of its eye. Here, you go, guys, get your release. Hopefully you can see him. Nice oh, splashing off he goes. Right, two fish, let's get down again. If you've not done broom fishing, it's good for all the for like all the family, like kids, adults, anyone. It's 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 a great, quite an exciting little bit of fishing. They give a good good account of themselves, load of head knock in, and they uh, they certainly can uh, bring a smile on anyone's face. Oh, here we go again. It's a little one. Fish on, guys. He says it's a little one. It's a better one. Be nice to get one for the table. Ah, oh, it's getting better, guys. That's a nice little fish. Oh, he's off already. Back down we go, that would be uh <laughs> he's having a jump round. We'll leave him there a second, I'll put him in a bucket. Bites again, straight away. And I reckon, boom, fish on. It was a bit of a different one, that guys, because what happened is the fish actually swam up with the um, swam up with the hook, so the line goes slack. Kind of a bit of a telltale sign. I don't think this one's much bigger than the last one. Nah, it's only a small fish. This one's going back. And straight back down. So, oh, with bream, they've got all these spines along here. They'll easily go in your hand or wherever else. They've also got some underneath them. But they're a lovely white fish to eat. Um, you can see they've got a big tail, nice and powerful as a paddle, and uh, dorsal fin as well. Now, with bream, you can see sometimes they've got, um, in the summer especially, they've got stripes on them and that's when they're reproducing so you always can tell these obviously aren't at the moment really but yeah see the teeth in there they've got little um there we go they've got little teeth they're not like the uh, the gilt head bream which is their like almost bigger brother with the gilt head bream you can always tell when you get one because they've got a gold band across there and if you get one of those you're a very lucky person so try and find a bucket in a sec i think we'll put them in here for a minute We'll bait up. Here we go again. Oh, oh, yeah. 
Oh, this is a better fish, guys. I'm messing around with the drag, but I think we better get it up. They're gonna bend. Unless it's foul look, it's giving a good count for itself. Boom, boom, boom. Violent strikes that rod. Oh, check this guys. It's a monster. Monster brass and two bream. Look at that. Whoa, hey, one's off. Look at the size of that brass compared to my hand. Beauty. Look at those teeth. Monster. Those teeth are purely for crushing crabs and um, and stuff like that. That's a beautiful fish. Look at the size of him, guys. The collarings is absolutely fantastic. So we got another bream there as well. Another fine bream. He's going in the in the scallop bucket at the moment. We'll sort that out in a sec. We've got a smaller bream here. You're gonna go back, mate. You're gonna live another day. Fine little fish. And look at this beauty. Now Usually I'd keep them for pot bait, but as I've got quite a few dogfish, this is lucky day. So we're going to get a lovely release of this and uh, show you guys. But firstly, I'm going to hold him up. Fish guys, what a beauty. Beautiful rockfish or ras. He, uh, he said, look at the size of that for a paddle tail. Now that's where they get their power from. So all these fish want to do when you get them is dive straight back into the kelp or the, the seaweed that they live in. And uh, another thing with these fish is you can tell where they're living. Sometimes they're a uh, orangey color, sometimes they're a greeny color, just depending on where the kelp, where they live. So yeah, what a fantastic fish. Hopefully he doesn't move for this guys. I'm just gonna try and show you his teeth. Look at those for teeth. They're absolute beauties. Well guys, if that hasn't uh, got you going, well then I don't know what does, but that was a cracking fish. Certainly uh, on, a, on a set of little uh, mackerel feathers, bait with scallop frills, on a little whippy bass rod. That's certainly done the business this morning. Now usually, big wrasse like that, they like uh, hard back crabs or anything like that. You usually get the smaller wrasse on, um, on the ragworm, but yeah, they. They mustn't be fussy this morning because scallop frills has done the trick for them. Oh, fish on straight away, guys. No, he's come off. And he's back on, but I... Playing around here. Tiny fish on. Oh, I want another ras now. Another bream, guys. They're all lovely condition again. Just on the bottom now, and we got bites already. Fish on. Oh, this one feels a better one. Got a bend here. Oh, this is a better bream. Or oh, is it? Is it a bream? There's not much head knocking. I don't know if this is... I don't know what this is, guys. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, look at this. Another species. The old horse mackerel. Look at the size of them. They're massive. Huge horse mackerel. Look at the size of that. Now again, it's only just lightly hooked. These are spiny fish. I can barely get my hand around that. Look at the size of that, guys. That's horse mackerel or scad. And they're, they're, 
their bodies, as you run your hands that way, they're smooth. Now just here, they're like razor blades. It's like putting your hand on the back of a razor blade. So you don't ever want to go that way. But yeah, they're a great bait. I'm going to keep... Uh, no, I'm not. We're going to release these guys. They're going to go back. So we'll get this one released. Here we go. You ready? And back down they go. And you, mate. Here we go, guys. It's always nice to release the fish. I hope you've got a good angle. Back down. Well, we've had Ras, we've had Bream, we've had Scad. What's next? Well, that's the bottom. Three turns up. Boom! Fish on. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, 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 what is this? Oh, I don't know if there might be a couple. Look at the bend, guys, there. We don't want to lose this, whatever this is. Slammed it. Reel down and pull up. Reel down and pull up. What is this? Another big ras, guys. Look at that beauty. Oh. oh, she's a beauty. It's like a camouflage, this one. Right, let's get this bream off first. He's a keeper. Lovely bream. Lovely. In you go, mate. And a beauty of a ras. Now you can see this one here, guys. He's just hooked his tail as well. Compared to the size of my hand, he's pretty big. He's only just hooked through that top lip. So we're going to get hold of him. There he is. Big paddle whack and off he goes, back down to the depths. So if any of you are unsure or haven't watched before, you'd like to know what boat I'm, what my boat is. It's an Orkney Fastliner 19, so it's 19 foot. And uh, they're great little boats. It's, I think 1990, I think the logbook is. And, uh, very popular boat for all around the islands. They're a nice size, they're quite they're quite stable. Let's see what happens this time, guys. We got bites and I haven't even got to the bottom yet. Fish on. Oh, this might be a ras again, guys. She's pulling. She's pulling. Cool. This is a great sport this morning. This is absolutely what I've been waiting for. Oh. Trouble is of getting big fish on the, the little hooks is they can easily pull them out. I can see silver, it must be a bream. Two bream. Two bream guys. One on the top, one on the bottom. One on the bottom's alright. He's a keeper. And that's why it was so difficult because he was fail hooked. Look, he was hooked through the top of his snout. So he goes into the scallop bucket. Now there is a reef here, so I want to just just where I've gone a bit further up, there's a reef, because we're drifting that way, so I've gone a bit further up tide to come down. I don't want to hook up with that reef. I'm hoping there'll be some more rats that come out of it. Oh! What is this, guys? Check the bend on this! This is a decent fish. I thought I snagged it. Whoa! This is, this is a good fish. I don't know what this is. Shame I haven't got the net ready. 
Slammed. God knows what this is. Oh, it's a big wrasse again. That absolutely smashed it. She's a lovely orange one. Now this is, oh, look at the color of that, guys. This is what I was saying to you before about the different colorings. Let me get this unhooked and I'll show you more. This is my favorite color wrasse. Look at that beauty. He just smashed those scallop frills. And look guys, he's got a bit, of, hopefully he doesn't jump, he's got a bit of damage here. He's just absolutely smashed that. Look at those spots on the back of that tail. What a beautiful fish. He's, he's going back right now, by the look of it. Off the back of the boat, guys. Straight off the back of the fish, guys. Giving us a wave, smash the camera and off he goes. He's back down. Down to four knots as well, guys. So that's the inner marina limit. Put these couple of fish that we had as keepers. The rest of them we chopped back, so they're a bit small. And there we are. Nice little feast. For uh, home sweet home, guys. It's always nice to be back in port. Well guys, hope you can see me, but that's another episode of Bailey Bit Fishing. I hope you enjoyed that trip, because that trip was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, nice to do some breaming. We haven't done some for a while in the boat. Um, this time of year at the moment, because the weather's obviously been a bit patchy here and there with the winds, we can't get out too, too far with the um, to go up to the bass spots or sort of for, for any flatfish. Well, we can, but it's just trying to get it on a weekend. We've got the sun in the background. It's now just started raining. I'm just about to get the boat washed down. Oh, something in my mouth. I'm gonna get the boat washed down, wash the rods down is another thing as well. Once you finish fishing, it's just important, not only just important just to wash the boat down, but wash all your gear down. So I'm gonna give this a hose when I get home, as soon as I get home with some fresh water and uh, give the rod a nice wipe down with some, maybe some soapy water and stuff like that. Always clean your, uh, equipment guys will last a lot longer but yeah if you've enjoyed this channel like and subscribe there's gonna be plenty more to come this video was gonna be the last one of the year and we'll see you on the next video which will be the abalone or the ormering tides that will be foraging so that'll be the first time that we do some of that hope you've enjoyed guys thanks for watching hit that like button we'll see you next time